Hi everyone, today I will be demonstrating how we can get this astonishing volumetric flow field measurements with a simple stereoscopic PIV setup. Remember, this is not the result of a computation, this is an actual measurement made in a wind tunnel. I'm going to assume here that you know the basics of particle image velocimetry, or PIV, where we take two consecutive images of a cloud of particles within a flow, and then we algorithmically track them to measure their velocity. Okay, so first I'll show my technique, which I dubbed the Spatial Temporal Averaging Skinny SPIV. And then we will go through how it fits in the context of uh, experimental fluid dynamics. The general setup is a regular stereoscopic PIV system. We have a double pulse laser with a light sheet optics and a set of two double frame cameras. We mount the entire system on a traverse mechanism such that everything moves together, cameras, laser and optics. Once we align and calibrate the cameras, we can observe that the angles and distances between the camera and the laser sheet don't change. The image of the model as seen by each camera changes, but the dewarping function at the illuminated plane is the same. This means that we can continuously scan the whole hardware system along the direction, capturing thousands of planes at different Z locations. To find out where the planes are located, we equip the traverse mechanism with an accurate linear potentiometer, which gives us a voltage proportional to the distance traveled. We acquire this voltage with a data acquisition device along with the pulses from the laser Q switch. Locating the rising edges of the Q switch in the data series allows us to associate each one of the PIV images to a different physical location. Then these image pairs are converted into flow fields through the traditional cross-correlation algorithm and are evidently instantaneous snapshots of the flow. In a sense, we can get a stack of planes with instantaneous snapshots at slightly different locations. We are going to choose a distance to average these instantaneous snapshots over. I call this process spatial-temporal averaging as we average over different spatial locations and time instants. We use a spatial averaging window that is small compared to the features we want to resolve in our flow, but large enough to include enough instantaneous snapshots such that it is representative of the true average. After averaging, we end up with a 3D volume flow field that closely approximates the mean flow that we are studying which we can then analyze and observe its intricate features to draw any physical feedback that we want. Okay, so now that you understand the technique, let's go through some objections and questions that may be raised as we compare this technique with the state of the art. So for example, a lot of researchers in the fluid dynamics community use tomographic PIV to capture three-dimensional flow fields, and it's been a quite well-developed technique now. I think Tomo PIV has some significant barriers for usage in wind tunnel testing, especially in high-speed high flows. In Tomo PIV, we illuminate a volume of particles and use some variation of the MART algorithm to integrate the views from multiple angles and reconstruct what the light volume of particles that produce the set of images seen by the multiple cameras should have been. I have done Tomo PIV myself a couple times and I must say, it is a very challenging technique when trying to work with high-speed aerodynamics. So I'm going to engage in a little rant here about Tomo PIV, so bear with me as this is the motivation for this work. The biggest issue we face when doing Tomo PIV is this massive trade-off between volume thickness and particle signal. Let's go through this in parts. We define the volume thickness as the dimension of the smallest side of the volume interrogated, which usually takes the shape of a box. As we expand the laser beam to increase the volume thickness, we spread out the light energy of the laser pulse over a larger area, which is proportional to this thickness T. This means that the light energy intensity per unit area goes down as the inverse of the thickness T, which is not great. But it doesn't stop there. When doing PIV, we need all particles to be in good focus. Particles that are too out of focus will just not be visible by the camera as their light spreads over a very large area in the camera sensor. So in order to get the particles in focus, we need to close the aperture of the camera lens, which reduces the amount of light collected for all particles. If we go through the math, and you can pause here if you want to check, we find that the F number of the lens is proportional to the thickness T of the volume that needs to be in focus. But a larger F number means we collect less light by a factor of 1 over t squared. Combining the lower particle initial brightness from expanding the laser sheet, which is 1 over t, 
with the closing of the aperture, which is 1 over t squared, we get the particle intensity as seen by the camera is proportional to 1 over t cubed, which is a massive penalty. Let's put some numbers in this argument to understand this a little better. Let's say we made a laser sheet with a 2mm thickness, which is a very common thing to do for planar and stereoscopic PIV. Now we want to do tomo PIV with this same setup, but we would like to interrogate a volume with a thickness of 80 millimeters. You see, most wakes in small wind tunnel aerodynamics need this order of physical size to capture all flow features in the, in the wake. So we increase the thickness by a factor of 40, meaning, according to our previous argument, we decrease the particle intensity as seen by the camera by a factor of 40 cubed, which is 64,000. And this is 4 to 5 orders magnitude less signal to work with. So let's say you have some equipment available in your laboratory, doing stereo PIV may be fairly simple, but then doing tomo PIV can become incredibly challenging with the same equipment, if not at times impossible. Okay, so now that the rent is over, we can pretty much conclude that tomo PIV, although it has its place, it is limited to a rather small subset of the experiments where PIV can be performed. In the future, we may be able to manufacture cheap high-energy pulsed lasers and cameras with a higher signal-to-noise ratio, and then Tomo PIV may become something workable, but now, especially with high-speed aerodynamics where the particles are small, it is pretty much a pie-in-the-sky technique. So now that we understand the challenges related to tomographic PIV, it may become more evident why it may make more sense to build the spatiotemporal averaging stereoscopic PIV system described in the beginning of this video. This is particularly the case if the measurement quantity of interest is the mean flow field, which can already be very useful to improve the physical understanding, as well as providing comprehensive comparison databases to assess the quality of computations. I wrote up a paper further going through the technical details of the technique and discussing a little further on the effect of spatial temporal averaging on the convergence of the mean, uh, which is linked in the description. Alright, I hope you learned something with this video. See you later. Bye.